I'm sure we've all had our fair share of fashion disasters, and I'm willing to bet that our wardrobes are full of items we only wore once, realized were a mistake, and put away hoping they would never see the light of day again. Yes, those white leather pants with the fringe on the side were a bad call, young Pachiti. Thanks for noticing. WWE superstars sometimes share this pain when it comes to their ring gear, which, until they're standing in the squared circle with the bright lights on them, may not seem like such a terrible idea, but ends up landing them in the doghouse with Trini and Susanna. I'm Adam Pachiti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 terrible WWE ring attires only worn once. To the catwalk! <laughs> I mean, join us. Number 10. The Undertaker's Snakeskin Trousers the Undertaker has always clearly prided himself on the attention to detail he plays to his character, and that includes his ring gear. The man must have spent a small fortune on his elaborate threads during his career, with all manner of tights, singlets, hats, gloves, coats, and bat wings? Alright, sure, and bat wings being commissioned for his performance. His look is one of the most iconic in the industry, though he is not immune to getting it very wrong. As The Undertaker morphed from the Dark Overlord of the Ministry of Darkness era into the American Badass in 2000, he began to experiment with his changed-up look. Dropping the supernatural element meant that he could wear jeans, bandanas, leather vests, and other redneck staples, but he could not pull off snakeskin pants. To be fair to the Phenom, he didn't intend to wear these jarring eyesores for his WWE title showdown with Kurt Angle at the 2000 Survivor Series. As the story goes, the air Airline lost Taker's gear and needing something to work in, he borrowed his pal the Godfather's actual pants. Wouldn't life just be so much easier if we all had a pimp to bail us out of tricky situations? Number 9. John Cena's Jeans You wake up and the sky is green. Fish are flying and birds are swimming. The purple sun is blazing, but it's freezing cold outside, and when you go to speak, the only sound that comes out is a cat's meow. The world as you know it is upside down, and John Cena is wrestling in full-length jeans. Yes, the man known for making jorts cool, arguable, once performed in a high-profile match wearing denim down to his ankles. In early 2003, Cena was just finding his way as the Doctor of Thugonomics, a relatively new gimmick that was credited with taking Cena off the chopping block. He experimented with different outfit choices, including red basketball-type shorts and some khaki deals, which he would always wear with traditional wrestling boots as he had a year to move on to his trademark sneakers. In the 2003 Royal Rumble, Cena entered at number 18, wrapping his way to the ring wearing a Houston Astros top in order to antagonize his hometown Boston crowd, and I kid you not, honest to God, full-length jeans. For Bella's sake, John, don't even think about hiding those juicy calves ever again. Number 8. The Bad Guys Long Boys while John Cena looks odd in anything other than knee-length denim these days, some wrestlers can have many different iconic looks, even if it does take us a while to get used to them. Remember when Chris Jericho went from long tights to trunks? Or how about Brock ditching the Speedo for his MMA shorts and gloves? Yes, it may seem odd at first, but eventually it becomes natural, and in time you can't imagine the wrestler wearing anything but their new gear. That said, no matter how many times I look at Razor Ramon wearing full-length tights, I cannot come to terms with the image. How can a man ooze machismo if you can't see his meaty thighs? To be fair, the bad guy only wore these things in a non-televised dark match against Tito Santana, which has surfaced on the WWE Network, and he did go with trunks for his actual televised debut. But it's interesting that WWE envisioned Ramon in the long tights to begin with, something that is backed up by concept art. Number 7. Kurt Angle's Tiny Medal Kurt Angle always looked the business in his custom-made singlets, of which he commissioned hundreds over the course of his long and illustrious career. Typically in various shades of red, white, blue, black and gold, and coming in all sorts of styles and patterns, Angle's gear harkened back to his amateur roots and fit his persona as the American hero to a T. Some were, naturally, a bit better than others, but whomever made them clearly always, at the very least, put in the effort and tried to do something unique. Well, almost always. 
On the February 19th, 2004 episode of SmackDown, Angle dressed for his tag team match with John Cena, wearing jean shorts, thank Bella, against the Basham brothers in something that looked decidedly unfinished. The sparkly red number had a gold medal with a letter A stitched onto it, and the word gold in, um, gold slapped onto his Olympic ass. It was either a rushed job or a concept that wasn't fully realized, but whatever the case may be, Kurt shelved it immediately after. Number 6, Blue Tista. Batista's 2014 comeback did not go exactly according to plan. First, his big Royal Rumble win was spoiled because he wasn't Daniel Bryan, and then he failed to capture the WWE Heavyweight title as promised to him at WrestleMania because of the unstoppable Yes movement. Things finally started to click when he reformed Evolution with Triple H and Randy Orton in order to battle the Shield in a series of absolute bangers. While the Animal, the Game and the Viper stole the show against the Hounds of Justice in Batista's last match of that particular run, many fans weren't talking about the quality of the bout after. They were talking about Big Dave's tiny blue pants. Yes, the infamous Blue Tista, which turned the Match of the Year contender into a meme. Look, Batista had worn blue on occasion before Four, notably against Triple H and Backlash 2005, but never a shade so light and never with matching boots, shin guards, and compression sleeves. He looked really out of place next to everyone else in the match as they were all wearing black, and fans picked up on it chanting Blue Tista at him while the new nickname also trended on Twitter. Number 5. Bret Hart's Pink Singlet Similar to Kurt Angle, Bret Hart had an iconic look that primarily used the same three colours, with a little variation here and there. The pink and black attack style was boots, long tights, and a singlet slash vest, with his gear often adorned with little hearts or skulls. Bret's gear evolved and became more elaborate over the years, and sometimes his attire would rely on more than one particular colour as opposed to being an even mix. At the 1993 Survivor Series, however, not only did the hitman go big on the bright pink, but he left his trousers trousers at home to boots. Yes, the excellence of Execution's legs were on show for the first time since he ditched wearing trunks in the mid-80s. This was done so that he matched his brothers Owen, Keith and Smith as they went into battle against Shawn Michaels and his knights. But it just looked… weird. Sexy, yes, but unmistakably weird. I'm pretty sure the singlet showed up again in the future, only with Brett wearing his long tights over the top of it. Number 4, Anarchist Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan has worn some outlandish pieces of gear over the years, from his furry boots at WrestleMania 30 to his eco-inspired outfits while he reigned as the planet's champion. That said, his most eye-catching ensemble ever was a big departure from his usual at the time and was only used once because Vince McMahon himself personally hated it. The outfit was a new style of trunks and kick pads that he wore for his great match with CM Punk at the 2012 Money in the Bank pay-per-view. They were black and green and had anarchist-inspired DB letters on them that looked like they were written in blood. He came to the ring wearing a matching coat, and if you didn't know any better, you would assume that this was D. Bry going in a completely new gimmick direction. According to Brian's autobiography, he received instructions via the referee, who was told through his earpiece by the WWE CEO that he despised the jacket and that he was to remove it immediately. Brian, anticipating that WWE wouldn't approve the new gear, hid it from them right up until bell time. Number 3, Curtis Axel Singlet. Curtis Axel is the son of a WWE Hall of Famer who was one of the best talents of his generation. Curtis Axel is a former Intercontinental Champion. Curtis Axel was once a Paul Heyman guy. But despite all of that, I'm struggling to think of anyone in recent memory as generic as he was. And that's not to totally knock the man himself, who was a dab hand in the ring and had his moments during his WWE career. It could have been the name, the WWE developmental wrestling style, or perhaps the nondescript gear. Axel wore lots of different pairs of trunks over the years, and none of them stood out or said much about who he was. Which might explain why he decided to don a singlet at Payback 2014. Teaming up with Ryback, a man who always wore great gear to take on Dust's Golden Star, Axel worked that night in a red and black number that was reminiscent of his late father in its design. Unfortunately though, his tits kept falling out of it and it had a stupid picture of an axe on the back. Far from perfect. Number 2. The Undertaker's Spandex Nightmare 
As we discussed earlier, The Undertaker's transformation allowed him to wear clothing that was more natural and undoubtedly easier to source. Alright, look, Taker basically wore his street clothes, the sort of thing that he no doubt bought in bulk at Bikers R Us. How peculiar it was then when he decided to ditch the denim and return to spandex for one night only. A No Way Out 2001, Taker teamed up with Kane to challenge Edge and Christian and the Dudleys in a triple threat tag team table match. He came out on a Harley, so that was good. Limp Bizkit were playing, always a treat. Leather Duster, super cool. Wait a second, what the hell is that under the duster? What I can only assume was a tribute to his Ministry of Darkness days had him looking more like Midian than the feared American badass. Taker's physique was a bit, um, softer around this period, and the tights and singlets look did not suit him or his new character one bit. And he must have known it too, because it was the only time he wore this outfit or something like it in this era. Number 1. Shawn Michaels' Brown Notes when Shawn Michaels returned at SummerSlam 2002, he presumed it was going to be a one-off, and besides, it was a street fight, so the usually ostentatious Heartbreak Kid got away with wearing a plain old pair of Wranglers and cowboy boots. When it was announced that he would be coming back once again, this time to fight over the World Heavyweight title in the first ever Elimination Chamber in the main event of Survivor Series at Madison Square Garden, we expected him to make the effort and dust off the rhinestone-encrusted waistcoat or the tights with the sparkly heart on them. On the night though, HBK showed up sporting a little Dutch boy's haircut and rocking some ghastly brown tights with a crap logo and the letter H on the side. Completing the disaster were his black knee pads worn on the outside of the spandex and some brown cowboy boots. As Michaels would later explain, the tights were unfinished, I'm assuming those H's were supposed to be followed by B's and K's, and he was forced to make do. Fortunately, Sean quickly reverted back to his old style outfits, giving us the sexy boy we all knew and loved. 